Welcome to the Skeleton Report. I'm Mark Nathaniel Skelton. Today we're going to be discussing sleep and brain health. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for this info and more like it. All right, so through the years, I've worked with a great number of people uh, through studies and career, and I've learned that your sleep does impact your health. So let's understand this dynamic a little bit more with this great article from NIH, that's the National Institute of Health, titled Brain Basics and Understanding Sleep. All right, so sleep is an important part of your daily routine. You spend about one third of your time sleeping. And they tell us that quality sleep is as essential to survival as food and water. Without sleep, you cannot form or maintain the pathways in your brain that let you learn and create new memories. And it's hard to concentrate and respond quickly when you have a lack of sleep. All right. So sleep is important to a number of brain functions. All right. And this includes how your nerve cells uh, known as neurons communicate to each other. And it tells us, in fact, your brain and body, they actually stay remarkably active while you're sleeping. Recent findings suggest that sleep plays a housekeeping role that removes toxins in your brain that build up while you're awake. Okay, so the brain is still active while you're catching Z's. So let's look at um, some hope through research and then maybe some tips. So what we're learning is scientists continue to learn about the function and regulation of sleep. A key focus of research is to understand the risk involved with being chronically sleep deprived. That means you're going long times without sleeping and the relationship between sleep and disease. Now listen to this. People who are chronically sleep deprived are more likely to be overweight, to have strokes, and cardiovascular diseases and infections and certain types of cancer than those who get enough sleep. Sleep disturbance are common among people with age-related neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, which is another type of neurocognitive disorder. There are many mysteries that remain about the association uh, between sleep and health though. All right, so what are some tips all right, getting enough sleep is good for your health, and here are some ways to improve. They say set a schedule, go to bed, and wake up at the same time each day. All right, when it comes to exercise, exercise 20 to 30 minutes a day, but no later than a few hours before going to sleep. Another thing is avoid caffeine and nicotine late in the day and alcoholic drinks before bed. Relax before the bed, okay? So try a warm bath, reading, or another relaxing routine. It kind of gets you in the mood to go to sleep. Also, this is important. Create a room for sleep. Avoid bright lights, loud sounds. Keep the room at a comfortable temperature. And don't watch TV and have the computer and, and all that in your bed and, and the phone going. So that's going to that's gonna disrupt some of your sleep patterns. All right. Don't lie in the bed awake. If you can't get to sleep, do something else like read or listen to music until you feel tired. And also, this is very important. See a doctor if you have a problem sleeping or if you feel unusually tired during the day. So you got enough sleep, but you still feel fatigued. That's important. Uh, most sleep disorders can be treated effectively. All right. So let's bring it back in. All right. So I just want to give you a a nice friendly reminder to make sure that you're getting enough sleep um, and just so that you know it's recommended that adults get seven to nine hours a day of sleep you got to fit it in health is wealth okay and uh even teenagers and babies are supposed to get more hours of sleep right so um i hope that was a blessing for you as it was for me and that's all i got and i'll catch you on the next go around peace